Robert Haley stars as Charlie McMahon in Spirited Away. It started yesterday. I got an irate call from my replacement down here. He claimed there was a glitch in my database. Old missing persons reports kept printing out. So I came down to see what I could do. And? Uh, there's no glitch, but these files kept popping up anyways. Cases spread out over 20 years. Unsolved. Unrelated cases? Almost, but prostitutes figure in most of them. Mary Lou Douglas. Charlie. Yeah, listen. Malcolm and I are down at Station 52. Guess what? Our ghost? Yeah, Mary Lou. She's back. This still gives me the creeps. Hey, Mary Lou's a friendly ghost. Ever since she died, she's helped us solve cases. Yeah. The worst of it is, I can't tell anybody about it. I mean, oh yeah, Deputy Chief McPhee and Charlie, they were partners. They scattered the ashes of this prostitute on the roof of Station 52. Now she haunts the place doing good deeds for fellow hookers. It'd be committed. Look, Mary Lou was a friend. And it was her last wish. The ashes, I mean. Still... It isn't the kind of thing you want to get around? You didn't tell anybody, did you? I think not. Here's the list. All the girls except one have vice collars on their sheets. Recognize any of these cases, Charlie? Mm. Olive Kenton. She was one of mine. That's the oldest case. It was a long time ago. Um, see, Olive was real young. Maybe 18? Her landlord called. She didn't show to pay her rent. We got into her apartment and everything was there. Dishes in the sink, closet full of clothes. What else? It's a long time ago. If I saw my notes... Not a problem. Hard copy files are down in the old cell block. Okay, Kenton. K, K, K. Here we go. Olive Kenton. Here's a picture. She was a beauty, eh? Yeah. I'd forgotten how pretty she was. Oh, well, here's my notes. Uh huh. Right. It was like she dropped off the face of the earth. You talked to her family? I never found her family. Truth is, I was never even sure if her real name was Olive Kenton. Runaways, it's, it's easy to buy fake ID. Arrested for prostitution, convicted of vagrancy. Yeah, her lawyer got her out on the minor charge, and then she went right back to work. On the track? No, Olive was too young and beautiful to work the street. Someone noticed, and... Uh, took her under their wing. Escort service? Not exactly. Angie's outfit. Angie? The Angela Ford Agency. Should I know? Angela Ford ran a very successful modeling agency for the better part of 30 years. Yeah, but her models weren't exactly posing for Vogue. It was a front for call girls. The most discreet outfit in town. Everybody who was anybody knew Angie. And used her. You interview her about the disappearance? Huh. Back then, nobody ever got to interview Angie. You tried. You ended up talking to her attorney. And shortly after that, somebody from downtown would nail you to the wall. They protected her that openly? Nobody wanted to see her little black book. Wow. What happened to her? Retired. Very respectable. Big mucky muck on the opera board. Don't they know? People love a reformed sinner, especially one with a glamorous past. Well, nevertheless, if one of these girls worked for Angie, you, you got to ask... What about the others? Do we have to? I'll search their files. If it checks out, we'll have to talk to her. No, you'll have to talk to her. Off the record. She won't talk to the police. And if I'm involved, I know what will happen. Nailed to the wall, like a jellyfish. Like a jellyfish? Uh, something we say down home. All right. Thanks, Mary Lou. Thanks a lot. I'm not a detective. Hello, Peter. There's a detective sitting in my office. No, I'm not a... I'm retired. Olive Kenton was one of my first cases, and Well, we... of course it's a nuisance. Don Giovanni opens tonight, and the founder's dinner is... Yes. My lawyer would like to have a word with you. Thanks. How dare you hang If up. I wanted to talk to your lawyer, I would have gone to see him, not you. Mr. McMahon, my time is very valuable. So's mine. I prefer to be paid for it. Look, I came here before the police officially show up. Well, speak. 
Olive Kenton disappeared while she... That was nearly 20 years ago, which makes it about as cold as a case can get. There's a kid down at Records who runs cold cases through his computer. He claims there's a connection between a whole series of disappearances. And the connection? They all work for you. Hello, Peter. No, it's all right. The gentleman isn't a peace officer after all. You are sweet. See you tonight. Any connection between these girls and myself is bound to be frivolous in nature. Oh, I told him as much. You've put all that behind you. Seems a shame to think your name will be... Stories great. about my past are hardly a revelation at this late date. Oh, I know, but nine missing girls? Point taken. But I'm sure you have a solution to my dilemma. Tell me what you know about the girls. I can make sure my friend finds a lot of blind alleys. You'd obstruct his investigation? Would you like me to? I think not. Peter? Yes, I'd like you to meet me at police headquarters. Apparently some young Turk is rooting about in my past. No, I want to cooperate fully. Let's talk to the chief. Yes, and find out everything we can. So? We got nailed to the wall. By the chief. But Angela gave a statement? Yes, very thorough. Girls come, girls go. There was a very high turnover at the agency, and she's got the records to prove it. A totally above-board operation, right? And what the girls did on their own time was their business. You got nothing you can use? Uh, not really, but there was that one girl, Karen Freeman, the one who didn't work for the agency. Her file kept coming up, so I got Jolene working on it. She had a roommate, Megan Turner. Guess where Megan used to work? The agency? Bingo. Megan Turner, I know that name. Yeah, she's kind of famous, too. For? She's the leader of SWAC. SWAC? Sex Workers of Canada. Prostitutes' rights. A long time no see, Joe. Yeah, don't get down the track much since I moved to surveillance. Yeah, well, you're missed. I'm missed? Yeah, most of the time a squad car pulls up besides a girl. She doesn't know if she's going to get rousted, busted, or hit on. With you, it was straight up. You help some women out there, sister. I tried. So, busy around here today? Yep. The strip -a -thon this weekend. It's our major fundraising event. The hell of a party. You should come, Joe. As my guest. Thanks, but... Yeah, yeah. When are you going to loosen up a bit, girl? I mean, you're beautiful. Just my type, really. What do you say? Harriet, you going out? Get more of that pink paper, will you? Love ya. Ah, who am I kidding? You play for the other team. Afraid so. So, I take it this is business? More of a personal inquiry than anything. It's about Karen Freeman. Karen? We're working some cold cases, and... She was your roommate? Yeah. She was a good friend from high school. Came to the city, needed a place to stay, so I took her in. Romance? Maybe. None of your business, though. That was when you were working for the Ford Agency. Yeah. Look, I didn't try to recruit her if that's what you think. I had to ask. What happened? To Karen? I don't know. I was... You didn't know me back then, but I had a pretty bad habit and I didn't get much help. When Karen disappeared, I was in jail. For soliciting? I wish. I got caught with a very large baggie full of heroin coming back from a date in Atlantic City. Importation with intent to traffic. By the time I got out, she was gone. So Karen have any connection with the agency? Nope. Why the interest in the, the Empress Angie? There's a series of missing girls. We're trying to connect the dots. Well, they all work for the agency? Except for Karen. I see. So, how'd they treat you there? How was Angie Ford as a boss? Velvet glove, iron fist. Any of the girls ever get hurt? Hey, a pimp's a pimp, even dressed in Dior. Does she use muscle? 
Duh. Well, you ever have trouble that way? Yeah, mostly I made my own kind of trouble. Because there's only one link between Karen and the other missing girls. You. It's a fluke. I mean, girls disappear every day. They, they make a few bucks, fall in love, uh, retire to the burbs, change their names. I don't know. I still have to check it out. Sure. Who did Angie Ford use for muscle? Well, mostly a guy named Leo Morris. Hmm. You know what happened to him? Yeah, he's in jail. He stabbed a girl to death. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I was a tough guy. Eh? <clears throat> Hard as nails, two packs a day. <laughs> now, any little Nancy in the yard could take me out. <laughs> Ironic, eh? How long did you work for her? Angie, all in all, maybe 15 years. <laughs> Start, starting in 80. Was it a full-time job? Nah. More like it was on retainer. Sometimes the girls needed protection. And sometimes they had to be kept in line? Sometimes. Do you remember Olive Kenton? There were a lot of girls. I, I can't say I remember many by name. <laughs> Most of them didn't even use their own names. Here's a picture. Oh, yeah. She was a sweetie. Did she ever cause any trouble? Ran away a couple of times. No big deal. And you tracked her down from Miss Ford? A lot of girls got pretty deep in the debt with Angie. She set them up in a wardrobe, apartment. Nothing but the best. <coughs> it's expensive. And Olive was in debt to the agency? I don't think so. I think it was more she was such a knockout. Angie didn't want to lose her. So you convinced her to come back? Me? Nah. All I ever did was track her down. Then Angie would go talk to her. And threaten her? More like negotiate. <coughs> a girl like that, she's worth a lot. You recognize any other names on the list? Yeah, a couple. <laughs> they all went missing, eh? That's right. Funny you don't remember them. How's that? Ms. Ford sent you after runaways. Yeah. And none of them ever went missing. Because I found them. You ever go after Megan Turner? Megan ain't on your list. Yeah, but you remember her name. Yeah. She's one you don't forget. Was she a runner? Nah. Megan's trouble was... She had a big mouth. She liked to talk? To who? <coughs> Clients. Journalists. Cops. Look it up. Do you ever have to discipline her? Could be... Look, look, every once in a while I had to slap a girl around, but that's as far as it ever went. I never laid a finger on any of the girls on this list, period. But you're in here for killing a prostitute, isn't that right? That was different. That was personal. Personal? I loved the girl, okay? And she was a cheat. I mean, I know communicating with the dead is difficult, but could the clues be more obscure? Hey, lay off Mary Lou. Sorry. Megan Turner, here we are. A whole welter of hits. The Sun, The Star. When? About a week before Karen Freeman disappeared. What's the story? That's going to take a sec. Oh, very interesting. What? Headline, Alderman Named and Call Girl Scandal. The professed prostitute claims the Ford Agency has long functioned as an outcall bordello for the city's most powerful men. Ouch. Turner was arrested for drug importation at Toronto's Lester B. Pearson Airport. The former model claims she regularly dated prominent members of the local business community and city councillors who protect the well-known modeling agency and its owner, Angela Ford, from prosecution. That's definitely not keeping your mouth shut. I remember when all this went down, but I'd forgotten the hooker's name. I thought the local police didn't touch Ford. Yeah, but Megan got busted at the airport. Customs, RCMP, all federal. So, she was looking for a deal. Importing for the purposes of trafficking. 
That's seven years minimum. This just in. Prostitute recants. Two weeks later, Megan claimed it was all a lie. She made it up to avoid prosecution. Yeah, so she went down for the drugs. Right. Paroled in 2000, two and a half years on a seven-year beef. Not bad. Could be she had a good lawyer. She was represented by Peter Jameson. Angela Ford's lawyer. Uh, didn't he used to be Alderman Jameson? Yeah. Malcolm, let's take Megan Turner's life and crack it wide open. You think that's a coincidence? What? We get into the car, and the first thing we hear is, Hello, Mary Lou. I think we're on the right track. Well, so do I, but if you think Mary Lou Douglas can affect the playlist on the local oldies... Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a coincidence, but you do believe, don't you, Charlie? When Mary Lou? I wish I didn't, but of course I do. Why do you think they stick around? Who? Oh, people like Mary Lou. Why don't they move on? I mean, if you believe in any of this stuff, most people move on. Well, the experts figure it's people who got hurt too bad to move on. They need some kind of release they can't get. I wish I could help her let go. There was always... talk. Yeah. You part of that, too? No. Come on, man. I was your partner. But uh, it was true. What? Yeah, it was true. What do you do when you fall in love with somebody hell-bent on killing himself? I don't know. Neither did I. Mary Lou got hold of a piece of me, and I never got it back. Is that why she keeps giving you cases to solve? No. Nope. Because she was always a pain in the ass. But she's never steered us wrong, has she? So I think I'm going to take a chance. Even if I do get nailed to the wall. Mr. Jameson will see you now. This way. Thanks. If this doesn't work, we are going to be singing the jellyfish blues. We've got the paper trail. Yeah, but what does it prove? Come on, we worked out the logic. All we have to do is rattle his chain. Just so long as he doesn't take that chain and beat us to death with it. Well, Kirk, good to see you. Uh, come on in. Can I get you anything? Coffee? Juice? I'm fine. No, thanks. Oh, all right, then. No calls, Marie. So, Peter, this is Malcolm Fieldstein from our computer crime unit. Oh, sit down, Mr. Fieldstein. What's this about? A paper trail. And Angela Ford. <laughs> if this is about Miss Ford, why aren't you talking to Miss Ford? She's been completely cooperative in this investigation, hasn't she? Very. Kind of a shock after all these years of having to talk to her through you. She is one of our long-standing clients. Yeah, like Megan Turner. Turner? Megan... Oh, yes, I represented her on a drug charge years ago. And got her a reduced sentence. She was a drug addict. She should have been in treatment, not jail. Admirable sentiments. Is that why you sent her three grand a month? I beg your pardon? Like we said, there's a paper trail. We followed it through four numbered companies, all set up by you for Angela Ford. You must have known. Known? Those companies were set up to facilitate blackmail. That's kind of a serious charge. True. But absurd. We've got Turner in custody, and she's going to tell us how you arranged to pay her off in return for suppressing evidence in the abduction and murder of Karen Freeman. Pretty good turnout for Friday afternoon, eh? Yeah, good start. Yeah, but I got a hell of a job ahead of me, so... What's up, Joe? You've been blackmailing Angie Ford for the past five years. No way. We can prove it. You were busted, and you tried to sell her out. 
Then suddenly you refused to testify. I had a change of heart. Or got bought off. What if I was? I turned that money into something good. Problem is, Angie's retired. The whole world knows what she did for a living, and nobody seems to care. So why does she keep paying you? Maybe she's paying for her sins. Maybe she was paying for one particular special sin. Lay it up. I'm mystified. Karen Freeman was your old lady, right? Like I said, she was a friend who moved in with you as soon as she got to town. So Karen was a U-Haul dyke. It's a common enough phenomenon. Tough talk. Don't get me wrong. Karen was a good kid, and she tried to help me, but I was pretty much beyond help. When you got busted, you offered to rat Angie out. I was desperate for a deal. Then Karen went missing, and you changed your tune. Angie hired Peter Jamison to represent me, so it turned out I didn't need to shop her. Oh come on, Megan. Karen went missing and was never seen again. Maybe she just figured out I wasn't worth the effort. Or maybe something went wrong when Angie snatched her. Maybe Karen got dead. That's a big maybe. She disappeared, and Angie has been writing you checks ever since. People will make the connection, and I'm going to make the connection stick. Fine. Go for it. Angie took her. That makes it kidnapping. Karen died. That makes it murder. You blackmail the killer. That makes it conspiracy. This could be your last chance. Tell me what happened. I don't know. Not for sure. All I know is Angie had her, and then she was gone. Why didn't you go to the police? Come on. Angie was untouchable in Tio. We both know that. But I still made her pay plenty, and I did something good with the cash, right? Sure. But she's not untouchable anymore, Megan. And with your help, we're going to take her down. I'm surprised you'd see me. Well, here you are. What was I to do? In any case, I've decided you did me a favor the last time you came by. You know, when one has a reputation, one of necessity gets thick-skinned. But to tell the truth. It nags at you. My decision to cooperate with the police in this investigation—it, well, it was like a cloud lifting, and I feel free. I see. And you know, the more I thought about them, the disappearances troubled me. So I did a little detective work myself. This is for you, Janet Marshall. She has a daughter in college and has been married to a real estate broker in the state of Kansas for fifteen years. I don't understand. You knew her as Olive Kenson. How did you? I talked to some of my former employees and asked about her. One of them heard from her a couple of years after she disappeared. She was surprised about the investigation, but decided not to do anything about it. She put the past behind her. I have a number. You can call her if you wish. Case closed.、Uh, yeah, thanks, but that's not why I'm here. What then? Karen Freeman. I want to know how she died. What? We've got enough to make the case already. Both Jameson and Megan will testify against you. What happened, Angie? So many things have happened over the years, but I never—I never thought of myself as a criminal. What I did was illegal, of course, but no one thought of it as a crime. Judges, politicians, my client list was—well, you know. I was paid well, and what I sold was discretion. And then came Megan. She was perfect, beautiful, adventurous, intelligent. So intelligent, I never even suspected she had a habit. If I had known, but I didn't know until until she'd been arrested. The panic that ran along Bay Street through Osgood Hall and all the way up to Queens Park, my world was collapsing around me. It was very dangerous for everybody. So you took Karen. I have a summer place, beautiful. 
Sometimes when I was having trouble with a girl, I'd take her there. It was quiet, remote, a good place to talk things through. That's where I took Karen. How did you get her to... I told her I needed her help to protect Megan. It wasn't until she was there that she realized... There's a guest suite in a turret. A beautiful view out over the ravine. With a heavy door and a lock on the wrong side. All you needed to do was convince Megan not to talk. It was a fait accompli. We were going to let her go. Peter had negotiated something with the judge. Megan was pleading to a lesser charge. But... There was a balcony. Karen took the sheets off her bed. Nodded them together. She was trying to lower herself to the ground... But the knots... She fell. I am so sorry. But it was an accident. If she had just done what she was told to do, it, it never would have happened. <sighs> You have been listening to Spirited Away, this week's episode of The Old Guy by Paul Ledoux. Featured in the cast tonight, Robert Haley as Charlie McMahon, William Colgate as Kirk, Ryan Rogerson as Malcolm, Karen Glaive as Jolene. With them, you also heard Deborah Kipp as Angela Ford, Joanne Vanicola as Megan Turner, Peter McNeil as Leo Morris, and Chris Wiggins as Peter Jameson. The music was composed and conducted by Milan Kinlicka. The recording engineer was Wayne Richards. Sound effects were by Matt Wilcox. Colleen Woods was the associate producer. Our coordinating producer is Barry Morgan. The program was produced and directed in Toronto by Bill Howell, the executive producer of The Mystery Project. I'm Bob Bolving, thanking you for listening and inviting your comments. See you next week.